next recording. I'm going to start this recording. Um, noise gate is off. We're on your clap. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that felt good. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, good sir? And change. What? The signage. You got to change oh. your signage, Jared. We're done with that recording. We are we are I... week seven of our sloop picks here, Jared. Week seven. Yes. Week there seven. We much better. Much, much better. Here. I didn't so... I didn't I didn't change the Tuesday episode until like two thirds of the way through the episode. <laughs> so I anytime anyone can uh, help me out on actually remembering to do that is always appreciated. All right. All right, so typically we pick six games plus the Ohio State game, but Ohio State is on a bye week, so we will pick seven games. We will pick seven games for week seven here. A uh, lot, a lot of great, a lot of great games. Uh, top twenty-five uh, matchups here, uh, but yeah, let's let's get right into it with the uh, big noon special on Fox, Penn State and Michigan. Uh, Penn State ranked number 10, Michigan ranked number five. And in this game, they have the Wolverines, a seven and a half point favorite. I think this is one thing that we, we talked about, Jared. Both teams haven't really played anybody. I know that the win over Auburn seemed like it was a good win for Penn State. It's like, yeah, on the road and SEC, great win there. And then come to find out, uh, wow. yeah. Uh, 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 Auburn sucks, but, but, but we look knew at the other side, time out, but time look, out, but you, we oh, knew oh, that oh, though. you can look at the other side of that though, Jared, and be like, it's tough playing on the road and the SCC. So. I've been, I've, I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that, that like, it doesn't matter who it's just cause it's at the SEC and it's, it's on the road it's, that it's tough. I also so, so hear we, that it's it, hard to play home games in the SEC. I've also heard that. So maybe Penn twelve State. to six, all field goals depends on who's better will win. Uh, so pe- maybe Penn State has the advantage 12, here because they because they played in an SEC environment here, Jerry. And by the way, we we know that Buckeye Zach in the chat, um, Buckeye Zach in the chat, that almost rhymes. It doesn't though. I'm not as happy as I thought I was. Um, he's picking Penn State because he says even if Penn State were to win twelve six. Uh, then, then they don't cover, or excuse me, Michigan were to win 12, six that they don't cover. So he's, we don't have a guest picker lined up, but, uh, Zach's here. So there you go. That's his prediction. <laughs> Feel free to change that <laughs> later if you want to. I'm just messing with you. Um, yeah, I, I'm not impressed by, by Michigan. Um, they win over Indiana 31 to 10, but they ran that up late um yep. it was tied at halftime um it was tied at halftime uh, i'd never that being said i never really thought indiana ever looked like they were gonna win um they beat iowa 27 to 14 and i was listen i don't know how you're gonna be michigan and act like you got this big bad defense and then give up two touchdowns to iowa come on now <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, I'm um, I'm not impressed with either of these teams, though. I, I think is I, I by say, save everyone a lot of time. I'm just going to say I'm not impressed with either of these teams. OK, um, well, I will. So who, who are you picking, though, Jared? Who are you picking? Um, I'm going to be picking Penn State. Seven and a half kind of feels like the perfect number for Vegas anyway, because I think if it were six and a half, I would take Michigan. So while I expect Michigan to win this game, um, I think winning by a full touchdown might be a little too much to expect. Um, in a game where the over under is only set at 51, uh, you know, so what we're looking at like a 27 to 20, 21 to 28 sort of football game here. Um, I'm going to go with Penn state. Oh, I, again, I don't think they win, 
but if it were even if it were six and a half, I would take Michigan. But at seven and a half, I'm going to take Penn State. Yeah, I'll I'll take Penn State here. I think it's going to be a close game here. And you're if you're giving Michigan over a touchdown, um, for the uh, seven and a half point favorite here. Yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take Penn State to at least cover. I to at most cover to most cover. I, I don't think they win that game. All right. Um. So that's our only noon game that we're picking here. So. Uh, we got a bunch of three thirties. Three thirties is is the meat. It is the meat of this weekend here. Yeah, I we don't normally know this far ahead that this is uh, our social screen window for the week because there's no like there's there's no uh, set schedule for it um, at least more than a week in advance. So, but yeah, we're doing. So, if you've ever thought about joining the Discord server and you want to know what it's like to hang out with us while we watch a football game we'll be doing the 330 window in the social screen this week yeah no absolutely all right uh so the first 330 game here jared uh probably the probably the uh biggest game potentially for the week it's alabama and tennessee okay i not the tab I had opened. I was about to call you out. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, yeah. Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama on the road to Tennessee. But similar to like Michigan, Alabama is a seven and a half point favor. And I'm going exactly the same way that I did with Michigan and Penn State over a touchdown here. Alabama still questionable is is their quarter is Bryce Young going to come back? Is he not? That's still is he going to be 100 percent if he's going to be playing? Nobody really knows. And uh Hooker is playing tremendous right now. Is is he the real deal here? We're gonna find out here. Is Tennessee the real deal? We're gonna find out here. But from what I've seen so far this year, I, I really like what I see from this Tennessee quarterback here. So I'll and then that, and that's the one thing that Texas A and M needed at the end of the game to beat Alabama. And I think Tennessee may have that here, so I'll I'll take Tennessee to at least cover and potentially win out in this game. Yeah, I think Tennessee has a real opportunity for an upset here. Um, it's I'll tell you this much. Looking at this, uh, Kyle. Just just shot in the dark here. Over under currently at 65 and a half. Under. I'm going over. I'm going all sorts of over on that number. Mm-hmm. Way I'm under. All sorts of over on that number. Going way under, Jared. Okay. All right. Another 330 oh, I didn't, game. I didn't actually, I didn't, I didn't do it yet. Uh like Kyle said, um, uh, the the this kind of feels like the Penn State and Michigan game with that number at seven and a half. Once again, I think that's a perfect number. Like Kyle said, uh, if, if you just change it up a tad, if you, if you take it down to six and a half, I'd probably pick Bama. I might pick Bama, but at seven and a half, I feel like that that's the line to push me to Tennessee. And like I said, I think Tennessee has a real opportunity to win this game, but doesn't mean that they will. But I think it'll be tight regardless. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a competitive game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. All right. Next game here we have, uh, we're going to the ACC country. And you, you, you look at these teams here and you're like, Jared, but, 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 what kind of, what kind of, what kind of pick is this, Jared? But yeah, then you realize, right. oh, Oh, one team is undefeated and the other team is five and one. And you're like, okay, all right. Not, not, now I understand here. Uh, we're talking about NC state and Syracuse. All right. Um, would it, would it surprise is, you to Syracuse find out that a, the team with the loss is actually the higher ranked team. Yeah. And the lower ranked team is favored in this game by three and a half points of Syracuse. Yeah. Syracuse. I don't know the I don't know the Syracuse team, Jared. I don't know who the Syracuse team is. 
They're a team that has defeated in this order Louisville, Yukon, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Purdue. Uh, okay. Vir- Virginia and Wagner. Yeah, Wagner. By the way, the Purdue for Wagner the record, the C-Town. Purdue game was close. Uh it was only a 3 point difference. Uh, I take Tennessee on the spread winner in a toss up. Yeah. Winner all oh, winner is a toss up. Yeah, I yeah, it's sort of the whole Jared take the underdog sort of thing. I I got you Zach. Um NC State uh while yes they lost to Clemson, they also beat Florida State. And Florida yeah. State is Florida State this year. Um, but they also beat Texas Tech, which at the time didn't feel like much of an achievement. But Texas I mean, Tech the, is at least a lot better than we thought. Um, yeah. The, the big thing with NC State is we don't know if um, if Larry's coming back. He's still he's still hurt. Uh, the coach coach didn't give any kind of ins, insight about um, about when he's coming back this season. So, and he says, he said, uh, he's super tough. But, um, he could be back this week or it could be in six weeks. I, I don't know yet. So that tells me he's not playing this week. I don't think he's going to play. So that could be, be a big part of why Syracuse is favored in this game here. But man, uh, I just don't really know Syracuse and I just, I, I'm just going to pick. I'm just going to pick NC State because I know their defense, especially the defensive line, is the real deal here. I saw a stat against Florida State. NC State um, hit the ball carrier for Florida State at or behind the line of scrimmage over eighty percent of wow. all the snaps. Wow. At or behind the line of scrimmage. So I'm picking the, I know, I know you're one of your rules, Jared is when in doubt, pick the quarterback. Well, and this one, when in doubt, pick the defensive line. So I'm, I'm going to pick NC state here to cover. I'm going to pick NC state as well. Um, as, as one of my other, when in doubts is when in doubt, pick the underdog. And quite frankly, I think NC state wins this game. I think NC state wins this. I mean, and I get like, if Leary doesn't play, that's obviously a huge deal understood um but i i I just i'm not i'm not i'm not willing to crown syracuse and i don't know why everyone else is their best win is three points over purdue that's their best win three points over purdue i'd be more proud of a 30 to 10 loss to clemson than i would a Three point win over Purdue. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, give me you're get so you're gonna give me points to take NC State. I'm taking NC State. I take NC State up uh, uh, minus three and a half. All right, in our third three thirty game here, Jared. We're going. We're going Big Twelve here. Um, I don't know what the over under is for a point total for the game, but whatever it is, take the over. Um, it is Oklahoma state and TCU. TCU is a three and a half point favorite in this game. What, what, what is the point total in this game? Jared 68 and a half, not as Give high me as the you over. Would... Give me 69. <laughs> uh, let's see points per game. They would score around, uh, 92. Uh, but points allowed per game, it would be about 48 or 49, 48, 49. Um, <laughs> but you, you look at the, you look at the passes allowed by yeah. each of the team here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Hold on to your hold on to your seats here. It's it's going to be a pass happy game here. I, honestly, and, by I think by um, by modern college football standards, three hundred and two sixty eight Oklahoma State and TCU in that order. Um, I don't think those are ridiculous, are they? Um, in the Big Twelve in college football, it's not good. Also, it's just kind of what you expect at this point. 
Um, yeah. TCU has, I would say, played to this point a, I was going to say better, um, but I mean, because like we kind of like we know what they're the ones that told us who Oklahoma was when they took mm-hmm. and they just ran Oklahoma off the field. They recently just beat Kansas and say what you want to say. Kansas was ranked. It's a much better team than we've seen from Kansas in the past. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma State has victories over Baylor, Texas Tech, which, again, is like a team that was probably better than we realized. Um, Arizona State, uh, and that was Arizona State before uh, Gundy, or not Gundy, Gundy's yep. the Oklahoma State coach, before Herm Edwards was fired. Um, and Kyle, also famously, a, a, a pair of teams that you and I had a lengthy argument about uh, on the Tuesday episode. And since I went to bat so hard, so hard for TCU in that episode, what choice do I have but to pick them to uh, win and cover? Yeah, so like, like you mentioned, TCU um, last week uh, beat Can. Hold on, is, is this true? Hold on, let me let me pull them up. Uh, no, it's not. Never mind. Um, so yeah, they they beat Kansas last week. Uh, TCU beat Kansas last week. Uh, gave. Kansas is their first loss of the season. And they're going to do the same thing here against Oklahoma State, going to give the Cowboys their first loss of the season. And I do think they will cover here because three and a half points, yeah, they, they could win by a field goal, but more than likely it's going to be like a touchdown or more. I, I would say a touchdown that they'll beat Oklahoma State. So I will pick the Horned Frogs in this game. All right. Who we got next? All right. So we got we got a trio of night games. So we will start with Clemson and Florida State. Uh, Florida State uh, made it a close one to NC State last weekend, and Clemson decided to start playing offense in the second half <laughs> against Boston College here. As they do. As as they do, and they did that against. Uh, against NC State the weekend before that. You think they're going to make this three games in a row? Maybe, maybe. I think Florida State has a actually probably an underrated defense uh, from uh, what we thought Florida State was going to be at the beginning of the year here. So I, th- I think it will be relatively close, but like in Clemson fashion, I think talent's just going to take over. So I'll, I'll take uh, Clemson to cover on the road, the four and a half points. You know, you know, it's fun with this particular matchup, Kyle. Uh, we already have like it's 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 too early in the year to be this spoiled. We already have three like opponents. We have three like opponents between Clemson and Florida Dang. State. We do. Don't they we? have all three play or they have both played Boston College, NC State and Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. Both teams beat Boston College in uh, decisive ways. We can say it like that. Um, Both of these teams uh, played NC State. Clemson beats NC State by 10 points. Florida State lost by two. Uh, And Wake Forest, Florida State lost by uh, 10. I almost said 11, 10. And Clemson beat... Florida, uh, excuse me, Clemson beat Wake uh, in two overtimes. I, I looking at how these games match up, and by the way, they've both played them all in the last three weeks too. So these are yeah. relatively the same teams that each team played. Um, it just looks like Clemson is playing the same opponents better. Um, it it is probably worth noting as I continue to sort of check over this, Kyle, here's another fun statistical anomaly, All right? Of those three games, neither uh, Clemson and Florida state don't have any matching locations. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Uh, Clemson went on the road to Boston College, on the road to Wake, and hosted NC State. And Florida State's just the exact opposite of that. Um, That's funny. So yeah, it's uh, 
I, I just see Clemson playing these like opponents better. That that's it. Um, three and a half is is fine. Um, if this were seven and a half, I would be a little more worried. If it were two and a half, I would have uh, stopped talking five minutes ago. But uh, at three and a half, this deserved a little bit deeper of an uh, deeper of an analysis. Um, and, you know, I have to sort of convince myself to take the favorite most days because um, like, I, you know, like I, I like to say, when in doubt, take the underdog. I, I don't feel like this is doubt here. I don't I don't I don't, I don't feel any doubt here. All right. All right. And the um, next game here uh, on 730 on the SEC network. So we're not going to be watching this one, but uh, it is a top 25 matchup here. I have the SEC the- network. With the uh, Bulldogs of of uh, Mississippi State taking on Kentucky, I think Kentucky had that uh, great start of the year. They were like, "Hey, look at us, guys! Hey, we're highly ranked. Hey, we're close to the uh, <laughs> we're close to the top um, the top ten here. We're a really good team." And they just kind of um, uh, crapped the bed after that. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, Kentucky's lost their past two games, especially their last game against that really bad um, South Carolina team here. Not not a good look here. While while Mississippi State's actually looking pretty good here, um, they they convincingly beat Texas A and M and just absolutely destroyed Arkansas uh, the previous week. So uh, Mississippi State favored by six and a half here. Man, if this was even ten and a half, I'd probably still take Mississippi State. I th- I think I think Mississippi State's just going to completely just, um, just completely destroy Kentucky in this game. Here's here's the problem I'm having. I take a look at this and like the Mississippi State wins on the surface feel better. They destroyed Texas A&M. They destroyed Arkansas, but neither of these teams, I I, I don't think ne- either of these teams are as nearly as good as we thought they were. So it, it, it feels it, those look better on the resume just as, as a quick impulse, but, but, mm-hmm. uh, but then you look at the Kentucky resume and, I'm not seeing anything better. They they beat Florida and everyone's real high on them after they beat Florida before we all just sort of collectively realized that Florida wasn't all that good. Then they almost, beat Youngstown State and Northern Illinois. Congratulations. And after that, the first two teams that they, you know, good win against Florida, play a couple cupcakes, turn around, start playing in the SEC again. And they dropped both of those games. Mm-hmm. And Ole Miss is, is is pretty good. South Carolina isn't. You, you don't go and lose to South Carolina. Um, so while Kentucky's game uh, schedule is, is bad and Mississippi State's schedule is probably better. It's, that's, it's absolutely better, by the way. It's absolutely better. Um, so who do you got? <laughs> Kyle's like, shut up and pick. You got man. You know it's a podcast. Sometimes you have to talk on a podcast, Kyle. I'm not sure if you if you realize that. Not I'm after, gonna go. Not after seven years, Jared. No, not after seven years. I'm gonna go Mississippi State here. Uh, I just I don't think Kentucky has any business being ranked. How are they still ranked, Kyle? Please answer. Please answer. You know. You know the answer, Jared. <laughs> you yeah, know but the a- answer. But I'm asking so does you to everybody it. else listening to this. Everybody but I asked knows why. But I asked you. Are ranked. But I asked you. I didn't ask them. I didn't ask myself. I asked. Kyle, Kyle's in our own chat answering the question. SEC. Because they are in the SEC. 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 Uh, you know where they don't chant SEC Alabama because they're too no, busy. They're, they're like the only ones that don't. I wonder <laughs> why. I don't. wonder why. 
All right, Kyle, what's the next game? <laughs> All right. And our last game here is USC and Utah. Uh, U- USC coming in um, ranked seventh, Utah 20th. And just double checking here. And yeah, Utah is a four and a half point favorite at home. Four and a half point favorite while being ranked 13 spots lower and having two losses versus USC's zero. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's kind of funny. You're looking at the stats here for both teams. Points per game, USC 40.2, Utah 40.3. Austin, did you hear us talking about USC? Like points per game or allowed points per game, USC 18.7 and Utah 19. Very, very identical here. Um, and then, and then offensive yards, very, very similar defense, a little bit of separation, but still kind of close. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, I think this is the kind of game that I think you just, you let Caleb Williams do his thing here and he's going to be the difference maker in this game. So I, I, I'll, I'll pick USC to, to probably win this game here. Um, Austin says key stat USC is 106th in yards per rush allowed. And Utah rushes 39 times a game. Uh, just so you, uh, you, you, Austin, that not is that much better. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, what is it? It's, uh, I, it, it's 152 to 136. I decided to not try and do the math. Um, and as far rushing yards, uh, Utah is averaging 201 4, 173 against, and USC 183 4, and 198 against. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was, I'll, st- I'll still stick with my pick. I, I just think the talent will um, overcome the. Um, um, We'll make up make the difference here. So I'll yeah, I'll, I'll still stick with the Trojans. Well, they recruiting wise, yes, Utah probably has the better talent, but USC in the uh, portal got got the better players. Yeah, um, it, this is in Utah, which is another thing that absolutely helps. Um, Y'all love riding USC, I swear to God. I don't care about USC. You're just such a hater. You're just such a wild hater that you don't know what center field looks like. You're so far off in left or right field, you can't tell the difference between center and far. <laughs> yeah. So who, who do you got here, Jared? Who, do, who are you picking? Uh, yeah, Utah lost to Florida, which at the time didn't look bad, but kind of looks bad in, in retrospect. Um, win some cupcakes, decimate Arizona State, decimate Oregon State. Then they turn around, used to lose to UCLA by 10 points last week. It was um, worse than that. They, they scored a touchdown with 30 seconds left. It was really, they were down by 17 points. Yeah. Um, USC, on the other hand, um, defeats Washington State, which isn't anything impressive. Defeats Arizona State, so there's a common opponent. Uh, doesn't look nearly as good in comparison um, to the, the final scores. They both played Oregon State, so there's another like. And once again, you have to note that Utah, Utah's point spread, you. Um, against both Oregon State and Arizona State is significantly favored towards Utah. And I mean significantly favored towards Utah. With that in mind, I I do like Utah to win this game, and I'm going to go ahead and and eat the points as well. Um, I, I, I do feel good that Utah wins. I'm a little bit nervous about the three and a half. But not 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 so nervous that it's going to scare me off of Utah. I'm picking Utah. All right, sounds good. All right, that is that is all seven games here: uh, Penn State, Michigan, Alabama, Tennessee, NC State, Syracuse, Oklahoma State, TCU, 
Clemson, Florida State, Mississippi State, Kentucky, and USC and Utah. As Jared mentioned earlier, uh, come join us over at discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we'll be chatting away um, all afternoon towards these games. Um, just a, for those who don't know what Discord is, it's just a big, just a big chat room with a bunch of channels in it, so you can find your place in there if you want to talk about the national college games, Ohio state. Uh, if you're into some other sports that's um, playing in, in the fall so for some reason, there's a professional sports um, <laughs> section in there for those who want to talk about um, that kind of, um, yeah, badminton. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And and if you really like it and you want to get some behind this uh, behind the scenes, information um hit up um patreon.thesloopcast.com become a patron and um you get you get some um behind the scenes um information here jared um but yeah um jared you got anything in uh jared's um why are, why are you ending the episode <laughs> don't we still have questions <laughs> Oh no, I was I was on a rent there, so I was. Like, I know I was, I was letting I was, you I was go. Just, I was just going. I, I was, was letting you go. go. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll do some questions here, and Austin has some another set of over unders. Jerry, we get twice the over unders this week. We're spoiled. I know we are. All right, he says Penn State, Michigan Wolverine offensive touchdowns at three and a half. I'll say over. I'll say over. Oh, I have to. Ooh, mm, oh, yeah, uh, oh, that's that's a, that's a great number, actually. It's a great number. I actually, I'll go under. I'll go under. The more I'm thinking about it, Austin, I'll, I'll stick with the under for three and a half uh, um, Michigan offensive touchdowns. I'm going to go over, but I think it's four. But I think like five is more likely than three, which is sort of how I came to the decision to go over. All right. Uh, NC State and Syracuse. Uh, NC State force Syracuse turnovers at two and a half. I'm going to say under. I'm going to say under. I'm leaning under. Um. Um, yeah, we, we talked about yeah we talked yeah. about that yes yes we know yeah we've been here the entire episode austin um the <laughs> um i do i i kind of feel like the, the one the one thing that is really hesitate forcing me to hesitate on this is that i feel like this is going to be a short game by which I mean, there aren't going to be a ton of plays. I think they're both these teams are very methodical. I think they'll run out the clock in a lot of ways. Um, so I just don't know. There'll be a ton of opportunity to get into that third territory area. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I think Syracuse throws three picks. It's possible. All things are possible. All right. Hooker. For the Alabama Tennessee game, Hooker rushing yards over under 46 and a half. I, I really didn't look at the numbers for his rushing yards, to be honest. I, I really haven't. What what does he do? So he has 45 rushing yards for 231 yards for the season. Mm, I'm gonna say under for this game. I'm gonna say under. Because really, it was what was, only what was the number game. again, it was Kyle? Only one game. It was only one game that he really went off rushing against. So Florida. I'm, I'm going to say under. Yeah, he has 41 game. Yeah, he has 41 a game, but his past three games, he has 24, 27, and 12. I'm, I'm going to say under. Not his last three, the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 reading that wrong. I am reading that wrong. Um. Now you got me thinking now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm still going to stick under. I, I, I'm I'm still going to stick with the under. He's only gone over that number twice this year. 
barely against LSU, where he got 56, and then significantly over that against Florida, where he went 112. The One could look games. at this and and see that he might be running more, which he did have a bunch of attempts against Pittsburgh, but I don't remember. Maybe that means he got, I, I don't remember, but it, it looks like he doesn't run the ball much against the ball states and Arkansas or not uh, Akron's of the world, but seems to run a little bit more often against Pitt, Florida, LSU. Um, but that also means getting those yards and then the sacks come. I'm, you know, I, I just talked, I talked myself out of it. I'm going over. I was going to say under, I'm, I'm talking myself out of it. I'm going over. <laughs> All right. For the Oklahoma state TCU game, he has Oklahoma state total points scored 38 and a half over. Oklahoma state specifically at 38 and a half. Mm-hmm. Over. Uh, they use it's 41 shootout. 41 against Texas Tech. 36 against Baylor. 63 against some FCS opponent. 34 against Arizona State. And then a max Oops. school. I, I'm still going to say over. I'm still going to say over. TCU, on the other hand, holding teams to uh, the highest score against TCU was 34. Um, let's see. I'm going to go under. I think this is a surprisingly not Big 12, Big 12 game. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, Clemson, Florida State, total game sacks by both sides at four and a half. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. I, I think both team, both offensive lines are very uh, prone to uh, to sacks here. I mean, we we saw it. We saw it in um, really look at look at the uh, NC State game. Yeah. For for both of them. Um, mentioned about how how often NC State got into the backfield for both of these against both of these teams here. I, I can easily see four and a half sacks um, going over for both teams here. Yeah. Um, is it? Wait a minute. Is, it's a total. Is that the? Yes. Total for both teams. Yeah, I got it. I feel like. Clemson might do that by themselves. I think Clemson Clemson is very flawed this year, but I think that they they haven't all season. I mean, I'm exaggerating for a bit of effect, Austin. I'm exaggerating for a bit of effect, but uh, I'm not impressed with Florida State's offensive line. And while this is a flawed Clemson team, a very flawed Clemson team, um, they do still have like good talent along the defensive line. All right. Um, Mississippi state and Kentucky, Kentucky passing touchdowns at two and a half. At two and a half specifically passing touchdowns, specifically passing touchdowns. Um, Let's see. They average under four touchdowns a game. Mississippi State averages exactly three touchdowns a game allowed. And we're talking total touchdowns, not passing touchdowns. And how those touchdowns come as far as them being a run or a pass can sometimes be pretty sporadic. Um, So I'm going to go under here. I'm gonna go under. Yeah, I'm going to go under two in both SEC games. He he's averaging one and a half touchdowns against SEC opponents. So I will take the under. Austin says it could be four, but it could be zero. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and last one, U- USC and Utah. Caleb William turnovers at one and a half. I'll go. I'll go with under because I think. As 
what I mentioned um, earlier with USC, I think, I think that I think Caleb Williams will have um, will have his game here. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say, I'll say under. You're throwing your bias again, Austin. Because like you can not, you can think Caleb Williams is overrated. He's not that good. You can think he's overrated, but to say that he's stinks or that he's not that good is is false is he in the top five quarterbacks in the country no top 10 i would say absolutely and see you're you're showing you're showing your bias i there's no way he's not top 10 in the country he might be top 20 you're being silly you're being silly uh, that's that's the only way i can think to say it is that you're being silly all right. You're being a right, silly got, billy goose. All right, and we got some more questions here. Um, we have oh, we have another question from Austin here. By if the way, Tennessee, by the way, under. If Tennessee beats Alabama, what would you say their percentage chances of making the playoff rises to? Um, I mean, like. Uh, let's take a look at Tennessee's schedule. I don't know what else. I don't know how else to answer this other than to to pull up Tennessee's schedule. Uh, so they do play Georgia still. And potentially twice. If they beat Bama, um, they could potentially play yeah, they, Georgia they, twice. Yeah, they may have to. Yeah, they may have to beat Alabama twice. So. <laughs> oh, um, shit, that's right there. Yeah, my bad. East. They may have to play um, Alabama twice, but yeah, I'm. I still say their their chances rise, but I still think them trying to beat essentially Alabama twice and Georgia. No, they have to beat Georgia. Yeah, I'm 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 going to say it's still low. I'm going to say low. So I'm I'm going to I probably give them a fifteen percent chance. I feel like that's generous. Um, yes. Like how Kyle, how much of a percent chance do they have of winning this game against Alabama? I would say maybe like I mean I I I have them that I have Tennessee to cover here, potentially winning. So potentially winning. Potent, potentially winning. I'd say maybe like 35% chance to win it. 30 okay, so let's say 35% chance. Now Independent of that, totally independent of that, what is their chance of beating Georgia when they play Georgia? Um, I'd probably give them like a. I don't know. George Georgia's been very susceptible recently here. So they have. I probably give. I probably. I probably give them the. Um, well, I would say a little bit less yeah. because it is over. It is in. Um, in Georgia here. It is in Athens. So I would say maybe about 25%. I think that's generous if I'm being honest. Um, so 35%, 25%. Now, um, what do they, what percentage do they have to beat Alabama a second time? Uh, let's just say it's 20. Uh, let's down, just go say, down to 15, go down to 15% from there. <laughs> well, no, no. Are, is, no, no, in all honesty, though, is beating them twice 15% or is beating them once and then once again? Because like, yeah. we're getting into like statistical theory. Yeah, BS yeah, yeah. Here. No, I'm but just for that, for that game, not, not right not total and all that, just for that game, I would say like 15% chance. Why, why, why 20% difference? Because it's going to be at a neutral field and not at Tennessee. Okay. That feels, feels a little large. Uh, okay. Like Neyland Stadium is a great stadium. Don't get me wrong, but that it feels awfully weighted. Anyway. Right. So 15%, 25%, and 35%. And then those are all independent of one another. And then we also have to just factor in like the 10, 15 percent that they are likely to lose other games. Like it just feels 
like a lot to, to overcome. So lower. Okay. I don't even, I don't even, is it because the head, the head is steaming? <laughs> Jared's thinking a lot. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, Austin's he's, he put together a list of quarterbacks to try and prove his point, by the way, like Thompson <laughs> Robinson, like I know where you got your bachelor's degree from and everything, Austin, but come on, man. That high is this is this an order? Mike, my, my no. confusing him with he said no. Oh, that's right. He's from UCLA. Crap. What's the Florida guy's name? Richardson. Richardson, not Robinson. Richardson, not Robinson. That's right. All right. Um, He's not on the list, nor should he be. Um, Oh, yeah. We're talking about Stroud, Young, Levis, Hooker, Leary, Thompson, Robinson, Martinez, Hartman, Daniels, Ewers. Getting getting sidetracked here, Jared. So, um, Tenet. Sorry, Austin. I I wanted to engage in that argument with you, but Kyle wouldn't let me. I I think the question question here. um, So I know about chances of. Tennessee beating Alabama here. I think whatever happens in this game will will get the um, AP coaches number one poll after this game. You think so? I mean, you got you got two highly ranked SEC team undefeated SEC teams going at it. The winner will get the number one spot. Zero chance in hell they would they would toss Tennessee all the way up there. Zero chance in hell. Over Georgia. Should that happen? No. Should that happen? No. But you're being will silly. it happen? I... Now, now you're being the silly Billy. All right. All right. And the last question we have here, Jared, uh, from Nomad. Has Bert officially topped 300 pounds? That's mean, and I'm not going to answer it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right that is all the questions jared we have if tennessee Tennis beats bama i think they move up to number three that's at least plausible i don't think they would jump them over clemson or michigan for that matter i don't think they jump clemson or michigan to, to i don't think vault. i don't think ohio state's high state's you going to jump georgia in a in a bye week here well, I think that maybe just be Austin's rankings. Um, yeah, I think in, yeah, in your rankings, yes, yes. Also, Michigan yeah. might lose this week. Yeah, I mean they might, yeah. but we're we're just assuming they don't because you just assume they don't unless they do, right? That's how we. That's how you, that's how you fuck with polls. Um, yeah. I like that I can say silly Billy and fuck with polls in the same episode, and no one would even blink an eye unless I said something. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's our last game. That's our last question. Um, Kyle. Yes. Hi. Hi. Everyone uh, visit the sloopcast dot com where you can find links to all of our other stuff. We have a highlights channel on TikTok and YouTube. You can find the YouTube one by going to shorts dot YouTube dot com. Uh, or you could just like look us up on YouTube and like we have a playlist that's filled with our our highlights or you can like go to our TikTok page or Instagram page. We post there, too. Um, what else? That's it. I You know, my my brain's turning off. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? <laughs> um, not really. I, I kind of echo what said in the last episode. Uh, uh don't play in weddings in the fall, please. <laughs> I get to I get to watch like no games this weekend, and I'm I'm a little disappointed from that. So I will be checking in in our Discord at discord.thesloopcast.com for all my updates. There you go. Uh, we have merch stores, by the way. You can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com where we have like a bunch of like Ohio-based merchandise. Doesn't 
Oh no, that would be Ohio, that would be Ohio State based merchandise that Kyle's showing you. That that you can find you can find yes. that sweatshirt at uh, that know your enemy sweatshirt with the M crossed out at um, that that one's at merch.thesleepcast.com. That's at merch. That's actually the old version. That that's our old school version. I I like that. I I like it too. I do like our new one a little bit more though. Um, aren't fall weddings curses? I mean, in my religion. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Kyle, you did Kyle's corner, right? My brain's turning off. This yes. is bad. And My brain is turning off. Hey, Jared. Yeah. It is time to end the episode. It's time to end the episode. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a uh, folk punk band from the Columbus area. They're called Two Cow Garage. That's T W O C O W Garage. <laughs> uh, my brain's turning off. I wasn't going to try and spell anything past three letters. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage. <laughs>